direct vidya half wave dipole antenna are you sad regarding that you don't know to compute the direct vidya half wave dipole antenna then this video is a solution for you pichel directivity of half wave dipole antenna consider an antenna of length lambda by 2 placed along z axis and a current i is flowing through the antenna the p current flowing through the antenna is represented by i0 directivity d is equal to 4 pi by p rad into u max where p rad represents the total power radiated and u max represents the maximum radiation done in the city the electric field component that exists in the far field is e theta that is g z0 i0 e raised to minus j beta r by 2 pi r into cos phi by 2 cos theta by sin theta here beta represents the phase constant z0 is intrinsic impedance in free space h phi that is a magnetic field component that exists in the far field for a half wave dipole antenna its value is j i0 e raised to minus j beta r by 2 pi r cos pi by 2 cos theta by sin theta here u max represents the maximum radiation intensity p rad represents the power radiated and z0 represents the intrinsic impedance in free space the value of intrinsic impedance is 120 pi or it is 377 ohms once we have the value of e theta and h phi we can proceed with our steps by computing the radiation density or it is actually the power density or the average power per unit area so that is equal to half into real part of e cross h or that is actually the time average pointing vector so that is equal to half real part of it is actually e cross h conjugate so the electric field component that exists for a half wave dipole is e theta and the magnetic field component that exists is h phi so e cross h conjugate will change it as e theta cross h phi conjugate so we have half real part e theta h phi conjugate and theta cross phi is actually r so that's why it is going to be as r where s represents the radiation density we have sr is equal to half real part of e theta h phi conjugate so consider this is our antenna scenario its length is lambda by 2 This is the point of interest. Maximum peak current is I zero, and theta, the term that we speak about, is actually measured from z axis. Substituting the value for e theta and h phi conjugate, we get it as z zero i zero square by a pi square r square into cos pi by two cos theta by sine theta the all square. Here. The cos pi by 2 cos theta by sin theta the odd square is approximately same as sin cube theta so we can rewrite the radiation density as z0 i0 square by 8 pi square r square sin cube theta once we know the radiation density we can calculate the radiation intensity by multiplying it r square that is u represents the radiation intensity that is equal to r square into z0 i0 square by 8 pi square r square sin cube theta uh, a z0 i0 square 8 pi square r square sin cube theta is actually the radiation density and we have radiation intensity as z0 i0 square 8 pi square sin cube theta here Whenever we talk about radiation intensity, it has got a maximum value also. Once we know the radiation density, we can compute the total power radiated, that is, P rad, that is integral S R dot T S. And we already understood what is the value of S R, that is, set zero i zero square by eight pi square r square into cos pi by two cos theta by sine theta the all square. And we also understood this cos pi sine term; its value is actually approximate to sine cube theta. Radiated power is calculated by integrating the radiation intensity. 
and then we will get it as z0 i0 square by 4 pi and integrating from 0 to pi cos square pi by 2 cos theta by sin theta d theta. Here this value z0 i0 square by 4 pi we can write it here whereas the magnitude of 0 to pi cos square pi by 2 cos theta by sin theta d theta its value is actually equal to 1.22. So we get the total power radiated as z0 i0 square by 4 pi into 1.22. So right now we got the total power radiator that is much needed to compute the directivity of a half wave dipole antenna and another thing that is needed is maximum radiation intensity. If you remember, we already computed the radiation intensity. That is, u is equal to z0 i0 square by 8 pi square sine cube theta. So, the maximum value of radiation intensity is z0 i0 square by 8 pi square. Substituting back in the equation of directivity, we get the directivity of a half wave dipole antenna as 1.64. It's because the 4 pi terms are getting cancelled out, z0 i square terms are getting cancelled out, and after that solving, you simply get 2 pi 1.22, and that is actually 1.64. So, we understood the half wave dipole antenna has got a directivity value 1.64 and the value of the directivity in terms of dB is 2.15. The same procedure can be repeated for computing the directivity of short dipole antenna also. Directivity of a short dipole antenna. The same procedure can be used to compute the directivity. So for that, we must know the electric field and magnetic field terms and we are going to compute the directivity. That is 4 pi by period into U max. First, let's compute the radiation density or the power density that is half real part of E theta H5 conjugate or it's also is equal to half Z0 magnitude of h5 square yes so we need magnitude of h5 so what is the magnitude of h5 it is i0 s yes, sin theta by 4 pi into omega by cr here the electric field and magnetic field they have got terms like 1 by r 1 by r square and 1 by r cube 1 by r terms represents the far field components whereas 1 by r square term represents the radiating near field terms and 1 by r cube represents the reactive near field term. 1 by r square and 1 by r cube terms they will vanish and in the far field only the 1 by r terms will exist. And also the magnitude of e raised to j term it is 1. So when we compute the magnitude we don't have to consider it. Substitute the value of magnitude of h5 in the radiation density equation, we get SR is equal to Z0 I0 square L square omega square by 2 into 16 pi square C square R square sin square theta. So what I did, Z0 by 2 is here and magnitude of S phi square, it is actually the square of this particular term. Once you have the radiation density or power per unit area, you can compute the total power that is integral sr dot ds and that is equal to 10 i0 square l square omega square by c square where omega is angular frequency or its value is equal to 2 pi f where f represents the frequency of the signal the antenna is dealing with and c is the velocity in free space that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So we got the total radiator power. The next step is to compute the radiation intensity. So radiation intensity is R squared times the radiation density. So take this answer, multiply it with R square. The R square term will get cancelled out and you will have U is equal to Z0 I0 square L square omega square 
by 2 into 16 pi square c square sin square theta. Once you have the radiation intensity, next you have to compute the maximum radiation intensity. That is, these terms and max, maximum value of sine term is 1. So that term will, will be 1 and we have the maximum value as z0 i0 square l square omega square by 2 into 16 pi square c square. Once you have the value of maximum radiation intensity and the total power radiated, substitute back in the equation of directivity. Yes, so that is U max and this is the total power radiated. Solve it and that's done. That means the short dipole antenna has a directivity 1.5. So just recollect. A short dipole directivity is 1.5, whereas the directivity of a half wave dipole antenna is 1.64. So a half wave dipole antenna has got a better directivity than a short dipole antenna.